Hi, I'm Marty Shupak. Welcome to Shupak Sports and T-Ball America. Please subscribe to my channel. Uh, I am giving you as much free content, videos, uh, not just live, but uh, some of my old videos too are going to be coming on. I should have 5,000 drills up on the website. This session is T-Ball Practice template number nine. If you've been watching, I'm going through different practices for T-ball. If you're involved in T-ball, I'm glad you're here. If you're not involved in T-ball and want to learn a little bit about running a practice, you'll learn some too. Again, please subscribe. I like to start every session. And by the way, these run anywhere from 15 to 25 minutes, sometimes closer to 23. I try to go through it fairly quickly, sometimes too quickly. <clears throat> I like to start every session with, with a little sports trivia, trivia, usually baseball. Here's the trivia question for this week. The great Babe Ruth, okay? Babe Ruth, what is the last Major League Baseball uniform that Babe Ruth wore? You have to listen to the question. What is the last Major League Baseball uniform that Babe Ruth wore? And that's in a Major League Baseball game. Think about that. We're going to come back to that at the end. Running a practice, as you all know, you want to make sure you have a little bit of a warm-up. Again, I say this every time. Studies have shown that even the smallest amount of time of warm-up can be preventive as far as injuries go. And also we're teaching young players. It's actually a lesson of life when they get to be adults, if they're playing tennis, racquetball, pickleball, hopefully they'll warm up, okay? It's a good thing to do. The first drill in this practice uh, template, again, practice T-ball practice template number nine. And if some of these overlap, it's because I do overlap drills, just bear with me. And if I do drills, the same drills a number of times, it's because I think they're important. The first drill, and I'll try to hold it up so you all could see it. I've been, uh, my producer says, I've been holding it too close to the screen, is the circle drill. Now, <clears throat> some of you will listen to this on a podcast, and it could be Spotify, whatever. I'm going to try to be as descriptive as I can, because I know some of you are jogging, listening to headphones, or you're commuting to work on the commuter train, or listening in the radio. I urge you, if you are, thank you, but try to go to Shupak Sports so you could see the images. Here we have a circle, okay? Now, this picture is showing the players with gloves, and I usually do this with older kids, but I've done this with T-ball and it does work. What I like to do though at this level, and I even with all the kids I do, is I try not to have them wear gloves early in the season. Now this particular drill, the circle drill, I don't recommend it in T-ball early in the season. It's something you might wanna do mid-season. And what we're trying to do without the gloves is we're trying to get into the habit of them not to reach for the ball. I find when the kids are older, if their parents have bought them a $300 glove, for whatever reason, they think if they just have the glove on their glove hand that the ball will automatically go into it. You know, baseball and life doesn't work like that. We want to teach kids to move their feet, though in this circle drill, they're basically stationary, but they're fielding the ball barehanded. And how it works is the coach will throw the first ball out and he'll stop the ball or catch it. Again, unlike older kids, they don't have to catch it, just stop it. And the player will then throw a ground ball to another player. The only rule is he can't throw it to a player next to him. What you could do <clears throat> if you've done this once or twice, and I have a circle, let's say, of 12 kids. You could, if you have 12 or 14 kids in a T-ball team, you could use two circles of seven. Utilize your assistant coaches. You throw ground balls. The player just has to stop it. And again, they can't throw it to the next person. And our goal is to keep the players have their eyes on the ball, okay, and to stop it. 
And the benefit of this is the players will learn to keep their head down. And also benefit is they learn to follow instructions. Okay. Very important. When I coach, no matter what age, I always maintain you don't necessarily have to catch the ball. If you just stop the ball and keep it in front of you, you still have a chance to make the out. So that's very important. All right, the next drill is the T-ball lead drill. Now you might see this on the internet or some videos where how the uh, players line up in one line and the coach will have them run with the glove and they'll throw the ball and they catch the ball. But T-ball, it's, it's very difficult for them to catch the ball clean and they're not really gonna do it, but I still have them line up in a straight line, okay? And you don't have to throw soft covered balls. You could throw, you could be creative. You could throw bean bags, you could throw Nerf balls, you could throw bigger balls. And what you want to have the players do is you just want to have them make contact at first with their hand. You could put gloves on them after the first or second turn. Um, and a little tip here is. You always want to have, in this drill, you want to have the players, if the sun is out, running into the sun. Because they're going to look back at you, you don't want the sun in their eyes. And another tip uh, here is that, talking about the sun, when you address the team, make sure you, the coach, is facing the sun, okay? And also, it's a good idea sometimes to get down on one knee so your eye level is the same eye level with the players, and what I like to do is, and you want to limit your talk. You don't want to become like a old-time football coach with a, a pep talk. Limit your talk. But when you do talk, pick a different base each time. Like tell your players, okay, let's all meet at first base. And at that practice, that's where you do the talking. And always go according to where the bases are, first, second, third, home. Okay, those are a couple of little tips. All right. Back to the lead drill. If you think your players are too young, you might want to just have them walk away from you, look back, and you toss them the ball, and they just have to touch it again, make contact, not catch it. If you have enough coaches, you could divide this line in half and have an assistant coach throw the balls to the other line. And when they're done, they go to the end of this line. Now, the benefits of this drill is that you're actually getting players, given their first experience of running and catching or attempting to catch a baseball. It could happen at a T-ball game. I've seen it, but it's very rare if you have a young, unless you have a young good athlete running after ball in the outfield and catching it. All right. Would give them another, uh, just another experience if they go on to play baseball or softball. And also in this, like I just said in the previous drill, we want players to move their feet. Okay, the next drill, I'm gonna give you another drill and I'm gonna give you an advanced tip like I always like to do in every session. So I hope many of you will go on to become a baseball and softball coaches with your own kids. And if you're like me, you might wanna do it after your kids are older. It's uh, one of the most satisfying things you could ever do if you love baseball, and hopefully you love baseball or softball. This drill is called the run at the lead base runner drill. And it's something kind of like, I kind of invented this. And uh, what I'm trying to do is teach young T-ball players, which is the lead base runner. You know, sometimes we assume too much. Sometimes we assume that players, T-ball players know where they force drill a force play is and they half of them don't sometimes we assume a player knows where the shortstop supposed to play but a lot of them don't first year players so you can't assume anything but what i'm doing in this drill and i'm going to just hold this like this is i'm having a player here and his back is to these two players the base runners the coaches here this player has a ball, baseball in his glove. When the coach yells go, this player has to turn around. He's got to determine who's the lead base runner. He's got to run at the lead base runner. Obviously, it's this player. He's closer to third than second. 
And what you do as coach, and I have fun with this, where I'll instruct the base riders, when I yell go, both of you run to third base. Or when I yell go, both of you run to second base. When I yell go, one of you run to second base and one of you run to third base. Again, the player has his back turned. You set it up. You give him instructions and the coach is here. You yell go. You turn around. And you could do this if you make it easier. You could yell go and you could instruct the base runners don't move until I yell the second go. So that way this player he could look at the situation on the second go. These players will break. Now, keep in mind, <clears throat> if this player is running to third and the bo and the uh, T-ball player is running at him, it doesn't matter if he's safe or out. We're teaching this player to go for the lead runner, okay? I've had situations, again, uh, different parts of the country. T-ball could begin as early as four years old. And we don't know. Some of these kids are sensitive. I've had kids on my team, when I yell go, they turn around and they just look and just start crying. You have players like that. And if you might, you know, you might have to baby them a little. There's nothing wrong with that. Just walk them to where they have to go. Walk them through. You have to adjust for certain players. Okay. Um, use, like I said, use different scenarios, run into the same base, run in opposite bases, run into the base they came from. And the goal is for the player to determine which player to tag and who is the lead base runner. Okay, I'm going to give you an advanced tip for all you parents and T-ball coaches, assistant coaches. If you're going to go on to coach after T-ball, keep in mind that um, you're going to want to instruct kids to do things correctly. What I learned over the years, whether it's batting or whether it's fielding if a player is doing multiple things wrong sometimes if you correct just one or two things the other mistakes will like self-correct or autocorrect so what i'm trying to say is you don't want to overcoach these players correcting too many mistakes at one time okay so that's my advanced tip let me go through the next drill the next drill is a fun drill. It's a fun game. It's a change of pace. I call it buddy baseball relay. I use plastic bats and cones. I divide the team up. And all it is is the players, they pair up. They're holding a plastic bat. Usually it's a wiffle ball bat. You see them in stores. They have a set of a, bat, a yellow plastic bat and one or two wiffle balls. Again, I don't want you to spend money you don't have but I like to keep like three or four of those in my car and you pair up the players and they have to, when you say go, they have to run around the cone holding the bat. You want to try to divide the team where it's pretty fair and don't be concerned if you have one player that is very fast and one that's slow, the fast player will have to adjust. Okay. He's kids got to learn to be flexible. Now I've said this before, when you're coaching T-ball, I approached it that 60% of the coaching is that as, as a baseball coach and 40% is, is as a phys ed teacher, though most of us aren't phys ed teachers. And I found that this is a very good formula. And also what I try to do, and I do this even with older kids, I try to have two skills and then I integrate a fun game, all right? It's a change of pace. And I'll just tell you a quick story. I'm a huge NFL fan. And in the summer, I go around to different teams observing their practices, okay? Though the NFL is just, in my opinion, it's it's going the wrong way with this legalized gambling and a lot of different things. But, you know, I'm still a fan. I attended a practice and it was one of these all-time great coaches. And what was interesting, the day, it was like 102 degrees. At the end of practice, he actually took the offensive lineman and defensive lineman. And these guys were spent. He set up cones with a small field. And he said, this is what we're doing. He said, 
they're going to have a game of touch football. I think he divided up like five and five or six on six. Whoever scores first, the opposing coaches have to run a lap around the track. Keep in mind, it was 102 degrees. And um, they did it. And I'm telling you, you see these 300-pound guys that were spent and exhausted. All of a sudden, they start chirping up and screaming and everything. And then they had some of the other assistant coaches go around giving them icicles. And it was it was a fun time. And it actually taught me even the most serious coaches know when to have fun. So if you're coaching at a higher level too, I don't care if it's 15, 16, 17, and 18, put into play some fun games. Okay, the next drill, this is a tough drill. It may or may not work, but um, I did it. It worked some years, some years it didn't. I divided the team in half. I put one T between third and home, one T between home and first. I put all these cones down, and one by one, the player would get like one or two chances, and he'd hit the ball aiming at the cones opposite him. So this group of T-ball players would aim over here, this group would aim over here, and if you get the ball on the dirt, you'd get like one point. If you knock down a cone, you'd get like two points. And make sure... Don't use the commercial cones. Those will never get knocked down. I used the small plastic cones. I had coached soccer the year before, so I had like two dozen. Don't go crazy spending money, but they are very cheap. It's a fun game, and it has a lot of hip, hitting repetitions. Make sure your team, though, make sure you know where they're hitting the ball. All right? You don't want this team hitting it over there or this team hitting it over there. You can have players on the side. And also, if you have to move the cones in closer, move them in closer. Make sure you adjust. All right, so that's the knock down the cones. All right, we're moving along. Next drill, I think I did this in the last session, but we'll just go over it again. I had some notes from a lot of people. It's the stay low drill. It's when you have a rope and you're getting players to bend down to field the ball. You're going to throw a ground ball. The player has to move forward. Uh, he's got to crouch under the rope and field the ball. All right? I like to do this again with no glove. You have another coach holding the uh, the rope over here. Make sure that coach is wearing uh, cotton gloves. Okay? And, um, yeah, that that's it. And then we go right to the scrimmage. And... Um, you know what? I'm going to give you my email at the end because a number of you have asked for it and some of you have written notes. So I'm going to actually, I'll, I'll tell you what it is now. It's green rewind. That's the color green rewind at gmail.com. Send me a note if you want. Just put in the uh, subject like T ball or baseball. Just so I get it, it could take me a while. I get a lot of t uh, a lot of emails, but I make sure I answer every one. Okay, next, and we're going to get to the um, we'll get to the trivia question and close this out. Again, I've done this. I like to do the scrimmage at the end of every practice. At first, I like to divide the team in half. Okay, and um, what I like to do is to when we go together as a team, I don't like a lot of standing around. So what I like to do, if a player is up, and let's say he he's up and he makes out whatever, I like to have a coach work with him on the side, hitting the ball off the tee as he's waiting for the other players. All right? Okay, actually, this, this is actually the still divided half. This is using the whole team. Make sure... You know, safety first. And what I like to do, I've said this before, I like to take drop down bases. I take two of them. I spray paint one red. I put that one at first base. I spray one, one blue. I put it at third base. So I have red, white, and blue. Some of these young T-ballers know the American flag before they know first, second, or third. I have had a lot of kids. They'll hit the ball. They'll run to third base first. 
Okay. So um, that's how it is. We're going to close it out. I'm going to uh, give you the uh, the trivia answer in just a minute. Uh, products. I know some of you want to see some products. Um, all the all the uh, drills in this come from this book, Tibor Drills. I'll put a link down. I, some of you have uh, told me you couldn't find the, the, the uh, book. So I'll make sure before any description below this, I'll have the link first, okay? That's that one. Uh, also, you, this is a similar book. Not as big with the drills, but it has some great pictures. T-ball skills and drills. I'll put the link down there. And I'm also going to put this. It's the T-ball skills and drills video. And I highly recommend you view it. Now, all of my stuff, you could find it for free. All right. Uh, the books, I think it's the uh, Amazon uh, I don't know what the program is called, but you can get it in the ebook for free. And if you they don't have it, don't go out and buy it with money you don't have. Please go to your library and ask for it. Okay. Again, I'll hold up the book again. T ball drills and T ball skills and drills. Your library, you hold it up there. They might tell you, you go to reference desk. They said, well, we're not going to carry books that are self-published, and these are. And you can insist and have your league president insist too. As far as the T-ball skills and drills, it's available on Amazon on their um, uh, Prime Video. I don't know how expensive it is or what. I'll put a link down, but I'm also gonna tell you and, I, and I'll mention it down below. It's available free in your library program called Hoopla and Canopy. If you're not familiar with them, again, when you're at the library, ask them. It's a great program. You get to see a lot of videos, thousands of videos for free on your computer or on your smart TV. Don't pay for anything if you don't have to, okay? Save your money for your kids, okay? All right. Back to the trivia question. We close this out. Please make sure you subscribe. Give me a thumbs up. It just helps out and give me a comment, positive or negative, I want to be better, feel free to contact me at greenrewind at gmail.com and check out my website, tballamerica.com. Okay, the trivia question is, Babe Ruth, his last major league uniform that he wore, what team was it? Now, as you know, Babe Ruth started with the Red Sox. Uh, he got most of his fame when the Yankees bought him. He ended up playing at the very end for the Boston Braves. But in 1938, he was hired as a coach by the Brooklyn Dodgers to coach the base, I guess, first base. All right. So that's the answer to the trivia question. It was the Brooklyn Dodgers. Interestingly, he had a fight that year with a player, Leo DeRocha, who the year after 1939 became the manager of the Brooklyn Dodgers, and he did not retain Babe Ruth on his uh, coaching staff. So the last uniform Babe Ruth wore was uh, the Brooklyn Dodgers for Marty Shupak and Shupak Sports and T-Ball America. Thank you in for tuning in and make sure if you're interested in this stuff, I have all the other templates there also. Until next time, there you go. I'll see you at third base.